Hey everybody, Greg Davis here. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up your website using Dreamweaver. In the first video we created the site design, all the images, and now we're going to put the website together. So when you open Dreamweaver, you're going to see the start screen as you can see right here. First off, we're going to define a new Dreamweaver site. I go to my files panel, click on this drop down menu and choose manage sites. I click on new. Okay give your site a name uh, like yourwebsite.com it won't show up anywhere it's just for you I name it as site1 okay and uh, I need to show Dreamweaver where my local site folder is and I've created a site folder back in the first video so I just locate my site folder site1 that was the name of my site folder click on it uh, click select click save and done okay now you can see my uh, site folder opened up right here and the reason why we do this is because the next time you open Dreamweaver you don't have to browse your site folder again you just click on this drop down menu and all of your website projects are going to be listed here you just select the site you want to work on and Dreamweaver opens up your site folder so it's a huge time saver and if you want to edit your Dreamweaver site just click on manage sites select your site click on edit and you can edit it you can also create a new site or remove a site okay I close it and again uh, you can see my site folder opened up right here there is my fireworks and my images folder that I created back in the first video and I'm gonna store my web pages right here so let's create a new HTML page. I can click right here or I can go under File, New. I get this screen up. I need a blank page, HTML and no layout. Click Create. And now I have a brand new HTML page. I save it. I save it inside of my local site folder and I'm going to call it Index lowercase letters and that's the main page of a website so when you type in yourwebsite.com in the browser or actually any website URL without any extension the browser will look for an index page inside of the site folder on the web server so the index page is the home page but other pages like if you have a products.html page in your site folder and you've uploaded that to your web server it's going to be available at yourwebsite.com forward slash products.html and if you have a folder in your site folder then your website.com forward slash the folder name forward slash and then your file name if you don't type in a file name after your folder name the browser will look for an index page in that particular folder as well so that's how it works okay I click save and let's talk about some HTML basics I go to code view so I can see the actual code of my page the very first line is the doc type. XHTML 1.0 transitional is the default doc type in Dreamweaver, and that's what the first line is about. The second line is the HTML start tag. And down here, there is the HTML end tag. Every tag has a start tag and an end tag, and the end tag is designated with a forward slash. So this is my HTML end tag, and you have to keep everything inside of your HTML tags. Okay, the third line is my head start tag. The head tags are not visible when you take a look at a web page, but important, inside of my head tags, I have a meta tag for character coding. UTF-8 uh, is the default. That's what most web servers use. And I have my meta end tag right here because it's a self-closing tag. Okay, then I have my title start tag. My title and my title end tag and then there is my head end tag again every tag has a start tag and an end tag and the end tag is designated with a forward slash okay under my head end tag you can see a gap you know the browsers render the code sequentially and they don't care about the space between your elements so you can add even more space if you want okay in the next line I have my body start tag and everything that is actually visible inside of your browser for your page will be inside of your body tags I go to design view real quick 
and type in two paragraphs. Okay, back to the code. And now inside of my body tags, I have a paragraph start tag, my text, then a paragraph end tag. I have another paragraph, then there's my body end tag, and then there's my HTML end tag. So everything that is visible inside of your browser for your page will be inside of your body tags. And you can put as many tags as you want inside of a tag. But if you start a body tag, for example, and then you start a paragraph tag, you have to close your paragraph tag first, and then you can close your body tag. So your tags cannot overlap each other. Okay, let's talk about how to position your content inside of a page. Basically, we use div tags to lay out a web page. We can also use tables, but tables create too much code, and we don't like that. Tables are great for data, but we use divs for layout. So I go to design view, and I'm gonna insert a div tag. I fold out my insert panel. Uh, if you can't find your insert panel, just go to your window menu and look for insert. I choose common and insert div tag. I insert it after start of tag body. That's all I have so far, my body tags. And I can apply a class style or an ID style to my div tag. The only difference between class styles and ID styles is that ID is a unique identifier to an element. Therefore, I can only apply an ID style to one element per page. So basically, I only apply class styles to my elements. I name it as first div tag. This is just a quick exercise. I click on new CSS rule. It's gonna be a class style. Here's the name of the class style. It's designated with the period in front of it because it's a class style. An ID style is designated with a hash mark in front of it. Okay, I define my rule inside of this document only. Later on, we're gonna use an external style sheet file, but this is just a quick exercise. I click OK, go to box, and I want my div tag to be 400 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall. And I change the padding to 20 pixels all the way around, so same for all. And I also change the margin, not same for all. Top zero, right auto, bottom zero, and left auto. I've given it a margin left auto and a margin right auto, just so that I can center it. That's how you can actually center a div tag. Okay, I go to background and I change the background color to gray. I go to border and I want a solid 10 pixel black border all the way around. Okay, that's it. I click OK. OK again. And here's my div tag. I select it so I can see my 10 pixel border and 20 pixel padding and I've given it a margin left auto and a margin right auto to center it. Okay, my div tag is 400 pixels wide from this point to this point. So the padding and the border are not included in that. Those are adding to my overall box size. And since I had no content inside of my uh, div tag, Dreamweaver put this line in, but I can type in anything I want. I just type in two paragraphs Okay, I turn live view on and now I can see how my page will look like in a browser. You can also preview your page in a browser and you should check out your pages in different browsers to make sure that they look exactly the way you want them to look. So go ahead and install all the popular browsers on your computer like Chrome, uh, Firefox, IE, Opera and Safari and then click edit browser list and add those browsers to your list. Okay, I click cancel and I have an inspect button up here. I turn it on and now I can see the padding and the margin on my different elements. I just hover over an element like for example my div tag and the blue view that you're seeing is the actual width and height of the element itself. The purple is the padding, the kind of different blue is the border and the yellow is the margin. Also, my tag selector down here tells me which element I'm mousing over. Okay, I turn live view off. 
and let's take a look at the code. Here's my body start tag. And as I mentioned earlier, everything that is visible inside of your browser for your page will be inside of your body tags. After my body start tag, there is my div start tag. That's how I inserted it. After my body start tag, it has a class style applied to it uh, called first div tag. Then I have my text inside of my div tag designated with a p paragraph tag, a start tag and an end tag. Uh, there's another paragraph and then there is my div end tag and my other two paragraphs that I typed in earlier. But these are outside of my div tag. Then there is my body end tag and my HTML end tag. And inside of my head tags, I have my CSS style sheet embedded. This is my style start tag. And this is my style end tag. CSS is a language that works alongside HTML. And the CSS style sheet is basically a collection of rules. I only have one rule inside of my style sheet, the class style that I just created. It's called first div tag, designated with a period in front of it because it's a class style. And inside of my curly braces, I have all the properties and values for this particular class style, just like I wanted. The background, the margin, it's all in there. And it's pretty simple too. There's a property like the height, for example, and then there's the actual value for it. But of course, I can change it anytime. Now, there are three different ways of inserting CSS style sheets. One way is embedded style sheet, just like this one. It's embedded in the page itself and it's added to my head tags. The second way is an external style sheet file attached to the page. The benefit of using an external style sheet is that I can style a thousand page website in just one place. All I need is an external CSS file and I can define all of my rules in that file for my entire website. And in my head tags, I only need a link to that CSS file so that the browser knows where to find it. That's what we're going to use the most often. And the third way is inline styles. So around the particular tag, like a paragraph tag, I can put style. And uh, I can just type in any properties just like in CSS. Let's see, I want to change the color. And I pick red. I close it off. And now my text is red. So these are the three ways of inserting CSS style sheets. Again, embedded style sheet added to your head tags, external style sheet file attached to your pages, and inline styles. You can use all three of those to style your elements. But if you style an element in all the three different style sheets, the values will be inherited from the more specific style sheet. The inline style is the most specific style sheet, so it takes precedence over the embedded and the external style sheet. The embedded style sheet is second, and then the external style sheet is last. Okay, and this was just a quick exercise. I go back and delete my style sheet and my content as well. And I'm gonna put a website together using the images that I created back in the first video. I insert a brand new div tag. Okay, I don't have anything inside of my body tags yet. And Dreamweaver is gonna insert it in my body tags anyway. So I just choose at insertion point, whatever. I apply a new class style to my div tag. I name it as container. I want to style it right away, so I click on new CSS rule. It's going to be a class style called container. There is a period in front of it because it's going to be a class style. And now I create a new style sheet file, so I can style my entire website in an external CSS file. I click OK. And Dreamweaver is asking me where to save my CSS file. I create a new folder. I name it as style. And I also name my main CSS file as style. Okay, it's a CSS file. I click Save. And Dreamweaver is going to create the CSS file for me. I can start styling my container class and it's going to be defined in my CSS file. I go to Box. And uh, I want my div tag to be 950 pixels wide because that's how I size my images my background image and also my header image is 950 pixels wide. 
Okay, I need the margin right auto and the margin left auto so I can center my diff tag inside of my body. I go to background and I browse my background image. It's called BG underscore container, just like the class style of my diff tag. Click OK. And uh, my background image is a one pixel tall image, which I want to repeat vertically. By default, the background image repeats horizontally and vertically across the whole element. But my background image is 950 pixels wide, just like my diff tag. So it can only repeat vertically. Therefore, I don't need to tell the browsers to only repeat it vertically which would be repeat Y. So I just click away, uh, click OK, OK again. And here's my container diff tag. You can see my background image right here. It's a one pixel tall image that repeats vertically. And Dreamweaver put some text into my diff tag because if there was nothing inside of my diff tag, then it would collapse. And here's my style folder and my style CSS file that Dreamweaver created for me. If you can't see it yet, just put your cursor in here and press F5 to refresh. My style CSS file also appears up here because it's attached to the page. Let's check it out and click on it. The first line is the character set. I don't really need this line, I could delete it, but whatever. And uh, here are all the properties and values for my container class. I can change anything here if I want to. Okay, I go to the source code of my index page. I switch to code view. And here is the link inside of my head tags linking to my CSS file. That's how the browser is gonna find it because there is the actual path to my CSS file which is relative to my document. Okay, I go back to design view. I delete my text and I'm going to paste my header image in inside of my container diff tag. I go to my images folder, get my header image and just drag it over here. Okay, your image must have an alternate text because if your image doesn't load for some reason, the browser will show the alternate text. And it's also important for search engines. So basically use a relevant keyword loaded alternate text for your images. If I sell a Dreamweaver course, I'll type in my main keyword like Dreamweaver and maybe tutorial and header. Click OK. And now my header image is right there inside of my container diff tag. Let's take a look at the code. There's my diff start tag, my image start tag the source of the image, the size, the alternate text that I just typed in, and there is my image close tag because it's a self-closing tag, and then there is my div close tag. Make sure you don't have a P paragraph tag wrapping around your image, because if you do and you style your paragraph tag later, it's going to apply to your image as well, and you don't want to apply the, let's say, the paragraph margin to your image. Okay, I go back to design view, select my image, and I insert a brand new diff tag. Wrap around selection because I need a header diff tag around my image. And I apply a new class style to my diff tag. I call it header. I click on new CSS rule. It's going to be a class style called header. And I define my rule inside of my style CSS file. I click OK. I go to box. And uh, I made a background image for my header diff tag, which is 950 pixels wide and 165 pixels tall. So I make it 950 pixels wide and 165 pixels tall as well. Okay, I go to background and I browse my background image. It's called BG underscore header. I click OK. And uh, by default, a background image repeats horizontally and vertically across the whole diff tag, but it's not going to repeat now because my diff tag is 950 pixels wide and 165 pixels tall, just like my background image. So I don't need to set the background repeat to no repeat. So I click OK. OK again. 
and you can now see my background image right here. You can only see this small part of it because my header image is inside of my div tag, so it overlaps it. Okay, I'm going to insert a brand new div tag to position my content below the header part. I go to code view. Uh, this is my header start tag. This is my header end tag. And I insert a new div tag right here after my header end tag. So my content is going to be right below the header part. I hit my enter key and I've got my cursor sitting here. I click on insert div tag. Uh, I insert at insertion point uh, right where my cursor is. I apply a new class style to my div tag. I name it as content. I want to start it right away. So I click on new CSS rule. It's going to be a class style called content. And I define my role inside of my style CSS file. I click OK. I go to box and I make it 800 pixels wide and I need a margin right auto and a margin left auto to center it. I click OK. OK again and there is my content uh, div tag. I go to design view and paste my text in. I'm going to style this text in just a bit but I go to code view and I need a brand new div tag for my footer. This is my uh, content uh, start tag. So this very first is my content end tag. And I insert my footer div tag right after my content end tag. And you know what? Let's write some HTML code. So you learn how to do that as well. We need a div start tag. And you can cut and paste the div start tag from above, but let's type it in. It's no big deal. Div. Class, I call it footer. Okay, I type in some text because my div tag would collapse without content. And all I have to do is close it off. This is my div end tag. I go to design view and I can see my footer div tag right here. I go to my style CSS file. And I'm going to style my footer class style. I want to define my rule right here. Actually, the order of your rules doesn't make any difference in CSS. So you can define it anywhere in the file. It doesn't matter. OK, I start out with a period because it's going to be a class style. And it's called footer. I hit my space bar. And I need an open brace. If you can't find it on your keyboard, just copy from above. OK, I hit my enter key. And I'm going to style my footer class style. First of all, I made a background image for my footer. And it's 950 pixels wide, 120 pixels tall. So I want my footer div tag to be exactly 950 pixels wide and 120 pixels tall. I just press my W key and I can already see my width. My code hinting is helping me out. Sometimes you have to trigger your code hinting. All you have to do is press Control spacebar. OK, I select width and I just type in 950 pixels close it off, hit my enter key, I type in height, 120 pixels, close it off, hit my enter key, and I need my background image, I just browse it, it's called bg underscore footer, click OK, and I switch to code view so you can see it better, I close it off, hit my enter key, and I type in margin top 70 pixels, close it off, hit my enter key, and I also type in text align center, so my text is going to be centered inside of my footer div tag. Okay, that's it, I hit my enter key, and all I need is a close brace. I go back to design view, scroll down, and here's my footer div tag. I just paste my text in. There you go. And I put my cursor inside of my text and my text selector shows me where my cursor is. It's inside of a paragraph tag, inside of my footer div tag, inside of my container div tag, inside of my body tag. These are only the start tags. If my end tags were listed here, they would be something like forward slash p, forward slash div, 
forward slash div, forward slash body, in reverse order. Those are not listed here, but we know that every tag has an end tag. Okay, now I'm gonna style my body tag. I click on new CSS rule, and the body is a tag. It's not a class style, it's not an ID style, it's an actual tag. So I choose tag, and I just select my body. My body doesn't have a period in front of it because it's a tag. Okay, I define my rule inside of my style CSS file. I click OK. And now I can style my body. I go to background, and uh, I made a nice fading background image for my body. I just browse it. It's called BG underscore body. I click OK. And uh, I click apply. And now I can see my background image. The only problem is that by default, a background image repeats horizontally and vertically across the whole element. But if I change the background repeat to repeat X, then my image will only repeat horizontal. Okay, I go to box. And uh, I have a 15 pixel margin on my body tag. It's basically there by default. In CSS, everything has a default value, but I can change it. I just change my uh, top margin to zero. So I'm not gonna have that 15 pixel margin above my header image. I go to type and I'm gonna define my font in my body tag. And uh, it's gonna apply to all the text in my entire document because everything is inside of my body tag and styles can be inherited from parent elements. I set the font family to Arial. I would prefer that they have Arial, but if they don't have Arial, I'll take Helvetica. If they don't have Helvetica, I'll take any sans serif. So that's what it means. You can edit your font list right here if you want a different font family for the second or for the third option, but I don't think it matters that much because most browsers definitely have Arial. On the web, most people use sans serif fonts like Arial, Verdana, or Helvetica. Okay, I set the font size to 16 pixels. I could also set the font color to black, but it's black by default, so I don't need to change that. In CSS, everything has a default value, and I don't need to change that unless I need something else. I click OK, and my text is now Arial, but I want to style my text the right way, so I put my cursor inside of my very first paragraph, which is my headline, and in my property inspector, I'm on the HTML tab, and I choose heading 1. Okay, my headline is now designated by an H1 tag and not a P tag anymore. And it's larger than my normal text because the H1 tag has its own default font size in CSS and it takes over the properties that I defined in my body tag. I'm going to style my H1 tag in a second, but before I do that, I put my cursor inside of my second paragraph, which is my subheadline, and I choose heading 2. Okay, and the heading 1. Uh, text is larger than the heading 2 text, and it's simply because it's more important. Heading 1 is the main headline, heading 2 is the subheadline. And about every five paragraphs, you can have uh, cross headlines. So this paragraph can be heading 3, and uh, maybe this one as well. Now, your heading 1 and heading 2 text shouldn't be used more than once per page, but you can use heading 3, heading 4 as many times as you want. And you can go all the way down to heading 6. Actually, I never use heading 6. I use heading 3, maybe heading 4, and that's it. But if you need more different types of cross headlines, you can use those as well. Okay, let's style our headings. I start out with, uh, with my headline. I put my cursor inside of it, and I click on New CSS Rule. Each one is a tag. So I choose tag. And uh, I don't have to look for it here, because... I've got my cursor sitting inside of my h1 tag and I define my role inside of my style CSS file. I click OK. I change the font family to impact. Actually, I have to type it in because it's not listed here, but it's a great font family for headlines. OK, I also change the font size to 46 pixels. I go to block and I need the text online center. I click apply. Let's see how it looks. Cool. I click OK. 
and now I'm going to style my h2 tag but let's write some CSS code so you learn how to do that as well I go to my style CSS file switch to code view and uh, here is my h1 rule so let's put the h2 rule right after that I type in h2 hit my spacebar and I need an open brace hit my enter key and I only change the font size to 25 pixels if you're not seeing any code hinting just press control spacebar okay I close it off hit my enter key and I need a close brace okay I go to design view and I'm gonna show you all the ways to style your text I select some text go to my property inspector I'm on the HTML tab and I bold my selected text there you go let's take a look at the code of the index page and my bold text is now designated by a strong tag a star tag and an end tag that's pretty much it if I want to get rid of it I can just delete my strong tags here in the code or I can go to design view put my cursor inside of my bold text and on my text selector I can select my strong tag right click on it or control click on the Mac and if I choose remove tag Dreamweaver will remove it for me I'm not gonna remove it let's see what else we got I select some other text go to my property inspector HTML tab and my next button is italic click on it and it works pretty much the same way as the strong tag uh, my selected text is now designated by an EM tag that's the italic and there's an underline tag as well but it's not listed here simply because it's not recommended users can confuse it with uh, hyperlinks but if you need it put a U tag around the text you want to underline and you can do that in the code okay my next two buttons are uh, unordered list and ordered list I select some uh, paragraphs like these three and I choose unordered list first okay my text is now designated by a UL tag it's unordered list and it also has LI tags for list items and you can see these bullet points in front of the list items I put my cursor in it click on list item and here I can change my list properties I can switch to numbered list which is basically ordered list and I can style it so instead of bullet points let's say I want alphabet large I click OK and now I have large alphabet in front of my list items and my list is now ordered list okay I change my ordered list back to unordered list I select it turn off ordered list and turn on unordered list okay I put my cursor right here hit my enter key and I can type in my next list item and if I want to switch back to paragraph I'll hit my enter key twice and I can type in a paragraph and if I hit my enter key Dreamweaver will start a new paragraph for me now if I don't want to start a new paragraph I hold down my shift key press my enter key and I'll get a line break I go to code view and this is a line break tag okay back to design view and my last two buttons are block quote and remove block quote actually I never use it but I show you I put my cursor inside of a paragraph I click on it and now I have a black quote tag wrapping around my paragraph tag and my paragraph starts right here I can click on it again to add more or I can just remove it and also I can style any tags using CSS I put my cursor in one of my list items inside of my unordered list I click on new CSS rule and I need a compound selector because I only want to style those list items that are inside of an unordered list but I only need the UL ally tags so I click on less specific once again and this CSS rule is only going to apply to those list items that are inside of a UL tag so it's not going to have an impact on my ordered list if I have any I click OK go to list and here I can choose a list style image 
and I want to use my check mark image instead of those bullet points. So I just browse it. It's called check mark. And click OK. Uh, click apply. And uh, you can now see my check mark image in front of my list items. I go to box. And I also need a margin bottom 10 pixels and a margin left 25 pixels. Click apply. Let's see how it looks. OK, it's good. So I click OK. And this is how you can style your text by styling the actual tag in CSS. But if you want to style a specific paragraph, or maybe just one sentence, you can apply an inline style to your text. First, I create a new class style that I can actually apply to my text. I click on New CSS Rule. I need a class style, so I choose Class. OK, it's going to be a class style, so I type in a period. And I name it as yellow. I define it in my style CSS file and click OK. I go to background and I change the background color to yellow. Click OK. And now I have a yellow class style using a yellow background. And I can apply this class style to pretty much anything. First, I'm going to show you how to apply it inline. I select some text. Go to my property inspector, HTML tab, and I have some text selected. So I apply my yellow class tag to my selected text. OK, my text is now designated by a span inline tag, which has my class style applied to it. I go to the code. And here's my span start tag. There is my class style applied to it. And there is a span end tag as well. I go back to design view. Put my cursor inside of my text. Select my inline tag. And if I choose none for the class style, Dreamweaver is going to remove it for me. OK, so this is basically a span inline tag with a class style applied to it. But I can apply a class style to any kind of tag. I put my cursor inside of a paragraph, select my paragraph tag, and I apply my yellow class style to my selected paragraph tag. OK, I go to the code. And you can see that my yellow class style is applied to my paragraph tag. To get rid of it, I can delete the class style here in the code. Or I can go to Design View, select my paragraph tag, and choose None for the class style. So this is how you apply a class style to pretty much anything. But if you don't want to create a new class style, you can also style a tag inline. I go to Code View. And let's say I want to style this paragraph. I type in style instead of class. And now I can type in my properties and values just like in CSS. I type in text align center, close it off, hit my spacebar, and I type in text transform uppercase, close it off, go back to design view, and my text is now centered and it's transformed to uppercase. The only problem with this method of styling is that if you want to apply those specific properties to multiple elements, you will generate a lot of code. So only do this if you want to style just one particle or element, and you're not going to apply those properties to anything else. OK, I go to the code. And let's talk about the head section, because there are a couple of things we need there. The first thing we need is a page title. Um, I'll preview my page in a browser. I have to save it. And you can see my page title right here. And it also appears in the search engines. So I Google, let's say, Dreamweaver. OK, you can see my organic listings. And the very first line here is the page title for each of these individual web pages. And basically, you need a relevant keyword loaded page title for your web pages and it has to convey some benefit to get people click on your site. I go back to Dreamweaver and all you have to do is type in your actual page title right here. Make it less than 70 characters. I paste one of my titles in just to give you an example. And I sell a Dreamweaver course so this title is relevant and keyword loaded as well. Okay, I also need a description meta tag 
which can also show up in the search engines right below your page title so it also has to be relevant to your page I want to insert it after my title tag I go to my insert panel and down here I have my head I need a meta tag okay in the value field type in description don't misspell it and in the content field type in your own description make it relevant to your page and put your most important keywords in it it could be like a sentence or maybe two short sentences again I paste one of my descriptions in just to give you an example click OK and here's my description meta tag I also need a keywords meta tag the keywords won't show up anywhere but I need them because search engines will look at it I insert it after my description tag I go back to my head and I need a new meta tag in the value field type in keywords again don't misspell it because it's important and in the content field uh, type in three to five comma separated keywords that are relevant to your actual page again I paste some of my keywords in but this is just an example click OK and here's my keywords meta tag and my keywords for this page okay I also need a link to my feed icon the feed icon is that small icon that appears on your web browser right next to the address bar and I've created a feed icon back in the first video so all I need is a link inside of my head section so that the browser knows where to find it I want to insert it after my keywords uh, meta tag I go to head and I need a link I browse my image it's called fave icon I click OK and in the rel field type in shortcut icon uh, don't misspell it I click OK and here's my link tag uh, here's the path to my fave icon it's relative to my document and it's a shortcut icon and the link tag is a self-closing tag just like the meta tags if you check out your page in a browser now in some browsers your fave icon is not going to appear you have to upload your entire website to your web server and then it's going to appear okay I delete this gap I save my index page and I go to design view and I show you how to link one page to another I just create two copies of my index page I select it, press Ctrl D or Command D on the Mac and I get a copy, I need two copies and I'm gonna name this one as order.html I just select it, press my F2 key and I rename it ok and the other one as contactus.html you can use a dash or an underscore to separate words in your file names either one is fine but dash is more widely used ok I open up my contact page and I change the headline to contact us I go to code view and I also need to change the title description and keywords because each page has to have unique title unique description and unique keywords I only change the title now to contact us you can change the description and keywords here in the code I'm not gonna do that now I go back to design view and uh, you can put your content here for this page I open up my order page and I change the headline to order whatever I go to code view and I change the title to order as well don't forget to change the description and keywords here in the code I switch back to design view and I go back to my index page and now I'm gonna link my pages down here in my footer I select my order text and in my property inspector 
I grab my target and point to my order page okay this is now a link and my text is now designated by a a tag because it's a link I select my contact as text and point to my contact page also if I choose target blank it allows me to open my link in a brand new browser window I'm not gonna do that now I save my index page and basically these links are relative links because they are relative to my document if you want to link a different website you can put the absolute URL here but inside of your document use relative links because those are actually shorter and also if you change a file name later for example if I change my order page to order now as I hit my enter key Dreamweaver prompts me to update my links so I can update my link and uh, I'm not gonna end up with uh, any broken links I don't update it now and I change it back to order make sure your Dreamweaver site is opened because otherwise Dreamweaver can't update your links and also you have to save your page okay I copy the content inside of my footer and I'm gonna update my other two pages I go to my contact page and paste it in I just press ctrl V go to my order page and update it as well okay I go back to my home page and all of your individual web pages should link back to the home page as well mostly because of search engine optimization reasons but also because of usability reasons usually the company logo is the link to the home page but I'm gonna link my header image I select it and I could put the absolute URL here but I just type in a forward slash hit my enter key and my header image is now linked back to my home page whatever it may be now when you link an image your image will automatically get a border I put my cursor somewhere else so you can actually see it right here I have a border on my image and I want to get rid of it so I select my image and change the border to zero hit my enter key and my border is gone okay I need a link to my home page in my other two pages as well so I go to my contact page select my header image type in a forward slash and zero for the border go to my order page select my header image forward slash and border zero I go back to my index page and I'm gonna style my footer I fold up my insert panel select my footer class style and down here I can see all the properties and values for my footer I can change the values here I can add property or I can delete or disable properties but I just double click my footer class style and bring up my CSS dialog box I change the font size to 14 pixels because I don't need such a big text inside of my footer and it's gonna take over what is defined in my body because it's more specific you remember I set the font size to 16 pixels in my body and styles can be inherited from parent elements but this property is gonna take precedence over that because it's more specific it's for my footer specifically I click OK and I'm gonna style my links inside of my footer I put my cursor in one of my links click on new CSS rule I need a compound selector because I only want to style those links that are inside of my footer but I delete my container class or actually I just click on less specific and I only want to style those links that are inside of a paragraph tag inside of my footer class style so this CSS rule is not gonna affect my regular links anywhere else on my website it's only gonna apply to those links that are inside of my footer okay I define my rule in my style CSS file click OK I set the color to black because I don't like the default blue links and I don't want underline links either so I change the text decoration to none I go to box 
and I also need the margin right 10 pixels and the margin left 10 pixels so my links are not gonna be that close to each other I click OK and my links are now black and not underlined but if somebody hovers over my link I want it to be underlined so people know that it's a link I still have my cursor in it I click on new CSS rule and I need a compound selector because again I only want to style those links that are inside of my footer I just delete my container class because it doesn't make any difference everything is inside of my container diff tag and I want to style my hover links so I need a column and I type in hover now if you click on this drop down menu you will see that you have link visited hover and active link is the link visited is the link the user already clicked on hover is when somebody hovers over the link and the active is basically the hover link for your visited link you can style all four of those if you want and if you do make sure you put those rules into your style sheet in the same exact order as they are here so in your CSS file the link rule comes first then visited then hover and then the active usually the order of your rules doesn't matter in CSS but in this case it does so keep them in the right order compared to each other okay I only style my hover links so I click away click OK and all I need is a text decoration underline click OK I turn live view on and now I can see how my page is gonna look like in a browser and my links are working perfectly I hover over them and they turn underline okay I end this video now because it's getting too long I hope you enjoyed it see you in the next video and we keep working on this site goodbye